hands together and give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. It's good to be in the house. Amen. Might be a little chilly on the outside, but we're going to get hot in a while, okay? Let, let us all stand as we go into our morning worship. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet should stand in that gate, so Jerusalem. If you're glad this morning and you know you're glad, go ahead on and put your hands together as we get ready to praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our morning hymn this morning is leaning on the everlasting arm. Followed by our prayer, call response, sweet, sweet spirit, praise and worship from our music ministry. Amen. Father God, is once again we come in the name of Jesus, asking that you will look down upon these, your people. Father, we ask that you will look upon your children this morning. Bless them and bless them in a mighty way. Father, we thank you for another day. We thank you for the activities of our limbs. We thank you that we had raiments in our closet. And Father, we thank you that we had a roof over our heads. Father, we thank you that once again you led us to the house of prayer and safety. Now, Father, we come asking for a special blessing on the bereaved family, those that have someone in hospital room, serving in foreign countries, locked in prison cells. And Father, we ask a special blessing for our pastor and his family. Father, we ask that you continue to let him go into your word that he might stand before that people and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, if there be someone here this morning who don't know you in the pardon of their sin, that when the word go forth, Father, and the invitation is given, they will come running, saying, what must I do? What must I do to be saved? And Father, we ask a special blessing on our seniors. Father, their steps have gotten a little short, Father, but they are still faithful servants. They are still making their way out to the house of prayer. We ask that you continue to bless and keep them. And Father, we'll be forever careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. 
For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's children say amen. 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 amen.
both hands together. Give God some praise. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Nobody but you, Jesus. Nobody but you, Jesus. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Everybody. Go ahead on and put your hands together. Let us praise the Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord for he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He woke you up this morning. Started you on your way. Amen. It wasn't an alarm clock that went off. Nobody but the Lord. Amen. Amen. If we have anyone who may be visiting with us for the very first time, will you please stand and remain standing to be recognized? Amen. Good morning, Central. Good morning. Amen. It's offering time in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Malachi, the third chapter, said, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. And we asked, Wherein have we robbed thee? And he answered us in tithes and offering. Goes on to tell us to bring the tithes and offering to the storehouse that they may meet for thy people and prove me now here with said the Lord of hosts that he would not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you should not have room enough to receive it. So let us stand this morning as we ask God's blessings on what we're about to bring and present to him and what we have left. Amen. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Father God, in the blessed name of Jesus, Lord, it's once again we come. We come now, Father, to bring you your tithes and our offerings. And Father, we're stepping out on your word this morning that you would open the windows of heaven and you will pour us out a blessing we should not have room enough to receive. Father, we all don't stand in need of a financial blessing. For that, whatever blessing we stand in need of, Father, we're asking that you look in our hearts and read our minds. And Father, we're asking that you would just bless your people this morning. And Father, we ask that you bless each and every one who's able to give. Bless those who wish to give, and Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you make it possible that they too may bring back to you the tithes and the offering. And Father, we ask a special blessing on our capital campaign fund. Father, we ask that everyone will still participate because we understand that much work needed to be done. But Father, we say thank you for all that you have done and all that you will do. And Father, we'll be careful in mind to give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's children say amen. 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 Center pews face each other. Outside pews face the walls. And please wait for the direction of our junior ushers. <laughs>
church say amen. If you love the Lord, say amen one more time. Amen, amen. Our singers are old, just made it plain. They didn't try to dress it up. They would just say something like, I got to serve the Lord until I die. In other words, there's no other choice. When you love the Lord, you got to serve the Lord. When they said, until I die, they used to say, while the blood is still running warm in my body, I got to serve the Lord until I die. We greet you in the blessed name of God, our Father, Jesus, our Redeemer, the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, and our God. To our worship leader this morning, presiding for us, Reverend Kenneth Wilson, to each of you, my brothers and sisters, on this Christian journey, we greet you in the joy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We say to our junior ushers who are on post, the fourth son is you, son, at the church, and at the 11 o'clock hour today, our young people will be singing and participating for us, but we have our junior ushers here at 8 o'clock. Let's give God a round of applause for all of our junior ushers. Amen, amen, amen. Bible and Proverbs 22 and 6 remind us when you train them up when they're young, when they're old, we will not depart. Amen. Because most of us can attest if the truth be told, growing up in church, we didn't want to do nothing. If mom and daddy had not made us, we would not, would not have done anything. Amen. But when you think about growing up in church and, and when they get in you, you can't get out of you. It's going to stay in you. Amen, somebody. So we thank God for our parents. So our guardians and as well as our leaders who work with our junior ushers each for a Sunday, we thank God for each and every one of you. Let me remind you that on the fourth Sunday in February, we will celebrate our Black History program during our 11 o'clock hour. And we will have what we call our voices. We're going to hear the voices of many uh, African Americans who made significant contributions that you may not have known of. We want to hear from the voices that may have been small voices but made great contributions. So we're looking forward to a great day of celebration at 11 o'clock with our African American Reflections. Our, our dance ministry will be a part of our service. We have reciters and we're looking forward to a great time. Mark that on your calendar. Amen. Our couples ministry are coming events. All couples are invited to attend a special couples Sunday school class on next Sunday, February 3rd, I'll be teaching from 945 to 1045 in the Family Life Centers. All couples are invited to attend. Let's get together and see what the Word of God says about distractions as it relates to our couples and the challenges you face. I don't know of any perfect relationships. I don't know of any perfect marriages. It's hard to make perfection when you got imperfection coming together. Amen, somebody. And, you know, but we can come together and discuss what the word of God says as it relates to relationships. We're going to have a light breakfast prepared for you, and then I'm going to teach on that subject matter on next Sunday. So we're looking forward to that. Please, ma'am, please, sir, as soon as we complete services, join us in the Family Life Center. You know, when we teach couple classes, we try to deal with issues that are relevant. Amen. We'll deal with it from the boardroom to the bedroom. Amen. Amen. We'll deal with issues that are relevant. Amen. It, it, you know, it ain't smiling all the time when you're in a marriage. Amen. Sometimes you walk through the door and you grab the person's hand, they look like, like you ain't touched me all week. Now you want the church to see us <laughs> coming in like we the cause. I don't know. That might not be the best example. <laughs> Amen. Then our couples ministry will host a workshop focusing on this marital strategy on Saturday, February 16th from 9.30 to 1.30 in the Family Life Center. Our speakers last year in Murder Beach, Reverend Jimmy and his wife, Reverend Verdell Douglas, did a marvelous job for us in Murder Beach. 
we decided this year to do that workshop here in Columbia from 9 to 1 so that more people could attend who maybe did not have a chance to go to Murder Beach. Those who went last year will tell you we had a great time. And the cost of this workshop is going to be $20 per person, $40 per couple. It's going to include breakfast, uh, catered lunch, and workshop materials. Amen. They would have a sign-up sheet and investable, and the deadline to pay is going to be by February the 10th. $20 per person, full catered meal, continental breakfast, and all your material. I think that is very reasonable. And you don't have to be married to attend this workshop. It's going to be from 9 to 1 in the morning because when we finish this workshop, everybody going back to their respective places. Y'all do get that, right? So you don't have to be married to attend. You can come together, you know, so we ain't going to be no overnight nothing. So everybody's welcome to attend. Amen, somebody. Now, it also have a save the date on there for a married couple cruise February 3rd, 2020 to Jamaica. 2020, we're, we're headed to Jamaica. All right. If he dating you now, you better tell him put a ring on him. If you want to go to Jamaica with the 2020, we're headed to Jamaica. Yeah, man, we're headed to Jamaica 2020. So we're looking forward to those times, sharing with our couples, getting to know each other. Someone posed a question that's where Reverend, can two people go? They're not married, they're just friends. Nothing is going on. Just two ladies want to go together, two men want to go to Reverend. Reverend, everybody's all right. Ain't nothing wrong with them. They just want to, can we go? No. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. It's a couple's cruise. Amen. Not a friendship cruise. That's a couple's cruise. Amen. So I'm just looking forward to hanging out with our couples and having a good time, getting to know you better. Amen. God is an awesome God. He can do anything but fail. Let us stand in preparation for the reading of our scripture, the reading of our scripture today from Matthew, the ninth chapter, verses 35 through 38. The gospel according to Matthew, the ninth chapter, verse 35 through 38. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they faded and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth labors unto his harvest. Let the people of God say amen. amen. Can we take it back home, y'all? Hey! 
Just keep playing it a little bit low, Anthony. Just keep playing it just a little bit low. It takes me back to 3000 River Drive at the Central Missionary Baptist Church. Chairman of our deacon, Deacon Morris Mitchell, mother of our church, Sister Ellen Allen, and the saints are getting together, start singing that song. And they're getting near the end and say something like, if you don't believe that I've been redeemed, follow me down to the Jordan stream. I stepped in the water, and the water was cold. It chilled my body, but not my soul. That the storm is passing over. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Come on here, Judge. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the storm. Come on, choir, let's say it. If you don't believe, you don't believe, I've been redeemed. Follow me. Follow me down to that joy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know yes, the Deacon Joe Clark, there used to be our theme song back on River Drive. Deacon Mitchell has started, and Sister Janet Harrison get a piece of it, and Dolores will get a piece of it, and Miss Allen get a piece of it. Before you know it, eight or nine people around the church would have their own version sing. Sometimes you just got to go back. Thank you, choir, for taking us back. Amen. Amen. Because we all have had some storms. And when you know the storm is passing over, <laughs> your response is hallelujah. Matthew, the ninth chapter today, we want to focus on verse number 37. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous. But the labors are few. Every fourth Sunday in January, my brothers and sisters, I deliver to you our annual address for our church to bring to you the spiritual and problematic objectives and goals for the upcoming year for our church family. So I come to you today bringing you those goals and objectives, reminding you from this sermonic thought, it's harvest time. But I got a semicolon there. After that, I put, but we need your help. Well, it's harvest time. Amen. Semicolon, we need your help. You. Sister Vanessa, it's good to see you in worship. You know that we'll continue to pray for you, all right? God bless you. On today, my brothers and my sisters, I greet you in a name that has transforming power, a name that could transform your chaos into comfort, your defeats in the delights, your sorrows into a song, your trouble into triumph, your blemishes into beauty, your problem into praises, your rock into roses. I believe there's somebody here today that know about that name, yeah. that name that could transform your house into a home, yeah. your grief into glory, yeah. where your burdens become lighter, your nights become brighter, your haters become your helpers, your stumbling blocks in the stepping stone. I believe there's somebody here today that knows something about that name. 
that name that'll take your defeats and turn them into delights, your heartaches into hallelujah, for there's nobody like him. I'm talking about that name today, that name that's a foundation that never shakes, it's a friend that never forsakes, it's a light that never goes dim, it's a fountain that never dries, it's a physician that never charges, it's a beginning that never ends, it's a bridge that never collapses, it's a deliverer that never disappoints, it's a conqueror that never loses, it's an anchor that never fails. I'm talking about that name. So I greet you in that name, that name that has knee-bending power, and that name that has tongue-confessing power. At that name, every knee shall bend, and every tongue shall confess. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. I come to greet you today in that name. Uh, is there anybody here that knows that name early this morning? I wish I had a praying church in here early this morning. Don't you know it was that name that woke you up this morning? That name that started you on your journey? That name that gave you a peace that surpasses all understanding? I believe there's somebody here this morning that knows something about that name. Uh, so I don't know about you, but about two o'clock this morning, I found myself out of my bed, on my knees, uh, praying, calling on that name. Because uh, I realized that name I could call on early in the morning. That name I called on on my way to work, on my way to church today. That name I called on when I mounted the rocks. Uh, there's still power in that name. Uh, do I have anybody here today that knows something about that name? Uh, that name calms all my doubts. Uh, that name soothes all my fear. Uh, that name has been better than me that, that I've been to myself. Uh, is there anybody here on this fourth Sunday in January that knows there's power in that name? Uh, I wish I had a praying church. Uh, if you know that name, put your hands together and give praise unto that name. Uh, I didn't say praise the pastor. I didn't say praise the choir. I said, but can you live praise to that name? Uh, I didn't say give your neighbor praise, uh, give your friends praise, but can you give praise to that name? Uh, I wish I had somebody here that knew that name. Don't fool me in here this morning. Is there anybody here that knows that name this morning? Is there anybody here that's glad that you know that name? That's power! That's power in that name. The Bonner Research Group has been involved in gathering and analyzing information according to churches since 1984. Many of their findings are startling and eye-opening. They have found that 33% of Americans are unchurched. In other words, out of 100 people you talk to, 33 of them don't go to church. They have no church affiliation whatsoever. While they found that 20% of those who have church membership they believe that living a good life will gain them a place in heaven. How sad to think that. That is why Jesus said the harvest truly is plenty, but the labors are few. There are people to reach. There's work to be done. And one of the greatest dangers of the modern church is that we don't see this as the most important work. Most everything else in church now come to for the work of reaching the lost with the word of God. And Jesus ministered to the needs of the people all around him. He met their physical need, but he was able to see beyond just that. Jesus was able to see the deepest needs of their hearts. As Jesus looked at the multitude around him, he was moved with compassion for them. This word literally means to be moved in the heart. He saw the reality of the need of the people all around him. He saw them as they were, and he sought to share his insight with his disciples. When we see and look around and see the condition of the world that we live in, my brothers and sisters, we ought to be moved with compassion. Amen. Mass shootings everywhere. everywhere. Mass shooting in schoolhouses. Mass shooting on jobs. Mass shootings in churches. Mass shooting in malls. Everywhere we go, there are mass shootings. Sometimes I heard somebody say, well, Pastor, there are mass shootings. Sometimes you can't be safe in church. Where can you be safe? What can you, you can't hide. No matter where you go, you are subject to some type of attack upon you. We live in a mean, unfriendly world. 
and we deal with mean, unfriendly people, when we look at the condition around us, we ought to have compassion and our hearts ought to be moved. Federal workers who had to go weeks without check, Allen and Benedict residents who had to be displaced and moved to other location, storm and hurricane victim, domestic abuse, young people's lives being shattered, hard to find affordable housing, hard to find health care that you can afford to pay, disparities in our judicial system, students who can rap but they can't read. My brothers and sisters, our hearts ought to be moved with compassion. Parents, there's something wrong with buying a child a $200 pair of shoes and the child cannot read a basic center. There's something wrong with that story right there. See, we need to be investing in tutors, investing in things that's going to help stimulate that child's mind. Right? My brothers and sisters, uh, when we look around us, our hearts ought to be moved with compassion. We're so busy trying to wear name brand outfits, designer clothes that look good on the outside, but don't have anything on our heads here. It's hard to be competitive in an in advanced society we live in when we can, our young folks can barely put a sentence together. Oh, my brothers and sisters, our hearts ought to be moved with compassion. As I understand this, my brothers and sisters, uh, every child ought to be looked upon as your child. Uh, you just can't celebrate when your child is doing well. Uh, you want every child to do well. You want other folks' children to do well. Because uh, we all, it takes a village uh, in order to raise a child. Uh, the village has left us. Uh, what has happened? What, what has become of the village? Uh, we can never be satisfied with just a few of us making it until all of us are doing well, until all of us are growing together, until all of us are walking in favor. We can't walk around being our chest start our head up like we've done something. Uh, the struggle is not over. When I struggle, you struggle. When you struggle, I struggle. We're all in this together. Amen. Our hearts ought to be moved with compassion. Let's examine our text. Let's I hold you long today. Verse 36, when Jesus looked at the lost people around him, he saw them as they really were. He was able to look beyond their self-sufficient, their self-righteousness and self-confidence. He saw the pain. He saw the loneliness and the misery that they felt in their heart. Jesus saw people who fainted, that is, people who had grew weary under the load of their sins and the unreal, unrealistic expectation forced upon them by their religious leader. He saw people who were scattered. Literally, he saw someone who was cast down or thrown out. My brothers and sisters, we're troubled on every side, yet we're not distressed. We're perplexed, but we're not in despair. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. We're cast down, but we're not destroyed. Oh, how we need to see the multitude like Jesus saw them. Over here is a family. They seem happy. They have a good job. They have plenty of money. They have a nice house. And all the things this world can offer them. Plenty of people like that live as Jesus was talking then around these communities in late. But if you could look into their heart, you would see turmoil, fear, loneliness, and desperation. They have no answer to their question. They got to realize that they can't do it by themselves, that they need the Lord on their side. They are people without hope, and they need someone to see them as they really are, someone who can see them as they are and still love them. That is a person who can reach them for Jesus, that is what we need to see today, our friends, our neighbors, and our family. They may look like they have it all together, but if they are lost and, and they don't know the Lord as their personal Savior, what does it profit a man to gain this whole world and in the process of lose his soul? We need to make sure that they know him and they know him for themselves, that they have a personal relationship. Can you see them as they really are? Can you see them like Jesus sees them? He knows their condition. Yet he loves them still. May the Lord help us to see the harvest through his eyes. Oh, that's good news, my brothers and sisters. I'm glad that Jesus sees me and he knows who I am. I'm glad that he looks beyond my fault. And I'm glad that he supplies all of my needs. It doesn't matter how dressed up we look on the outside. 
If your heart is not right on the inside, then something is terribly wrong. Uh, I've learned uh, that God still loves me, even when I'm mixed up and messed up. That God still loves me, even when I fall down by the wayside. That the Lord still loves me. Do I have any witness in here? I've learned that I don't have it all together all the time. But I learned that God still is on my side. I, I've learned how to thank him in advance uh, for how good the Lord has been to me. Uh, I've learned to stop complaining about what I don't have. I learned to praise God for what I do have. Uh, I've learned to praise God for every step that I take. Uh, I've learned to praise God for every breath that I take. Uh, I learned to praise God for his blood that's running warm in my body. I've learned to praise God that I'm clothed in my right mind. Uh, I've learned to praise God because he's worthy to be praised. Uh, do I have a praying church in here? I stopped by to tell somebody it doesn't matter where you are right now, but it matters where the Lord is getting ready to take you. Uh, and somebody here, you ought to get ready to walk Walk in your favor. You ought to get ready to walk in your anointing. You ought to walk in your blessing and see what the Lord has for you. Is there anybody here that believe God has something great coming your way? Is there anybody in here that believe that God is getting ready to move in your life? You better tell your haters you should have kept me down while you had me down. I'm getting ready to get up and when I get up I'm going to look up. Uh, and when I look up, I'm going to hook up. Uh, when I hook up, I got God on my side. Uh, I will lift my eyes unto the hills. Uh, for when cometh my help, uh, not some of my help, uh, but somebody shout all. Uh, shout all. Uh, shout all. Uh, Say the devil is a liar. Shout all. Uh, tell him I've been through hell and back. Shout all. Uh, Say you've been talking about me, but I'm still gonna make it shout all uh, shout all of my help uh, will come from the Lord uh, I wish I had somebody here that would give him praise uh, for what the Lord has already done if he don't do anything else uh, if he don't make another way if he don't open another door if he don't heal my body if he don't pick me up if he don't do it he can uh, cause I know God is able. If you know God is able, praise him like he's able. Praise him like you love him. Praise him like he's been good to you. Praise him like he can. Because God is able. Stop by to remind you that it's harvest time. The harvest is plentiful. But the labels are few. Three things I want to leave you with. First of all, in verse 37, Jesus saw the potential of the harvest. Hmm? He saw the potential of the harvest. Let me make it relevant to where we are. This is the Lord's house. I see the potential of the harvest in the house. I see the potential of the harvest that's in this house. But I also see few laborers. All right, all right. All right. Potential of the harvest is here. Where are the laborers? There's a harvest of voices out there for the male chorus. I see the potential of the harvest. Amen. But where are the laborers who are willing to give the Lord one hour a month on a Thursday night from six to seven, just one hour to sing songs of praises on the full sun? I see the potential of the harvest. When I look around and see ushers, Senior ushers have been standing for 30 and 40 years, standing till the legs hurt, till they have to shift the weight from one side to the next side. I see the potential of folks out there. Good legs can walk 
who the Lord been good to, but very few laborers who want to stand at the door and be door keeper. I wish I had a praying church in here. I see the potential of the harvest, but the question is, where are the laborers? Everybody busy. Nobody has any time. What if God's got biz on you? What if God didn't have time for you? What if when you call God sick and needed a healing, a blessing, a miracle? What if God said, I don't have time? What if God said, I'm busy, I got somewhere to go, I got something to do? Nobody has time anymore. I see the potential of the heart. But the question is, where are the labors? Do this for me, don't, and you don't have to do it now, but write down one ministry at this church you're a part of. I see the potential of the heart, but where are the labors? See, Jesus looked at the crowd as I'm looking at the crowd, and he saw a plentiful harvest. I'm sure that all his disciples saw were people pushing and shoving to get close to their leader. But Jesus saw more. He saw men who needed to be saved by grace. He saw a harvest that was ripe for the picking. He looked beyond their condition and their destination. He saw people that could be delivered, changed, and saved. He did not see the problem, but all he saw was their potential. What do we see when we look at the people all around us? Do we see sinners who lost, or do we see those who God can still save? Do we see people as they are, or do we see them as the Lord can make them? That is the view Jesus had of lost men. He saw them not as they were, but as it could be by grace. We need that same kind of vision if we're going to reach men in this day and time. One day Jesus stood with his disciples outside the city of the Samaritan. Now the Samaritan were his people despised by the Jews of Jesus' day. The Samaritans came about through the intermarriage of Jews with the colonists sent to live in Israel by the Babylonians. Jesus went to a city of the Samaritans, spoke to a sinful woman. He saw her not just as she was, but as she could be through grace. He saved her, and many Samaritans were also saved because Jesus looked at the harvest as being everywhere and plentiful. What am I trying to get us to understand to say that there are people all around us who need Jesus? The harvest truly is plentiful. Men are ripe for the picking. We merely need to see it and do something about it. May the Lord help us see the harvest through his loving eyes. First of all, he saw the potential of the harvest. Then second, he saw the problem of the harvest. Verse 37, as Jesus looked at the harvest, he acknowledged the fact that it was plentiful and that it was pitiful. But he, as he, lost, he saw lost men all around, he also recognized a problem, that there were few laborers that were working in the Father's field. You know that same problem still exists today. Reaping the soul harvest is hard work, and few, it seems, are willing to roll up their sleeve and get involved in the work. Jesus called his men to follow him, promised to make them fishers of men. Of course, my brothers and sisters, the fish those of you who are expert fishers, uh, so they say like Morris Govan, of course those who are expert fishers require that fishermen go where the fish are, to the water. You can't catch any fish on dry land. You gotta go to the water. Those of us who, who farm, or those who farm, not those of us, because I farm, but those who farm know that the harvest just doesn't gather itself, Deacon Kelly. In order to reap the harvest, you got to put in some time uh, plowing the soil. Uh, you got to sow the seed. Uh, you got to get the weeds out. Uh, you got to have the water. Uh, you got to realize that you got to do the work before the harvest comes. Surely we can see that people are in sad shape today, spiritually speaking. Surely we care about them and want to see them saved by grace. May we come to the place where we're not just content to see it, but come to the place where we're willing to go into the harvest and reap what is, what is needed for Jesus Christ's sake. First of all, I want to remind you today that it's harvest time, and the Lord saw the potential of the harvest, but he saw the problem of the harvest. But third and finally, 
He saw the power of the harvest. In verse number 38, I want you to see this. Pull 38 up, Stephen. I want you to pull this in verse 38. Many times we look around, and our prayer is for other folks to get busy doing the work of the master. But the power of the harvest, look what Jesus, look what the word of God said. Pray you therefore the Lord of harvest, that he will send forth the labors unto his harvest. In other words, you can't get anybody to do anything that they don't want to do. But if you pray unto God, God will send the labors that's needed for the harvest. Uh, do I have a praying church, right? As Jesus spoke about the harvest, the needs associated with it. He told his men what to do first. He told them pray. Because seeing the harvest brought into the barn, that's not my work. That's God's work. He must till the soul of the heart of the person. If the heart is not right, it's difficult to get people to serve God. But when your heart is right, there's no problem serving one who has been so good to you. See, he went on to remind he must water the seed of the word that is planted and he must cast the sunshine of grace upon the heart of the lost heart. Uh, there never will be a harvest. You see, the new birth is a miracle. It is awesome work of God in the human heart. Only he can do it and he must pray over the harvest. Remember that was a dispute as I pressed to the code that who then is Paul? And who is Apollos, but ministers by whom we believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. For the word of God said, I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. For then neither is he that planted anything, nor he that water, but it's all about God that will give the increase. My brothers and my sister, know that Jesus told them, Pray that the Lord of the harvest will send for labors unto the harvest as we develop a burden for the lost and began to pray for them as we should. The Lord will develop a compassion for them within our own heart. If we pray as we should, uh, the Lord will work within us that a desire will be born within us to go into the field and work for the harvest. Then we can say like Isaiah said. Then said I woe unto me for I am undone uh, because I'm a man of unclean lips. Uh, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. Uh, then flew one of the servants unto him, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from the altar. And he laid it upon Isaiah's mouth. Lo, this has touched thy lips. Uh, now I heard a voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send and who will go for me? Then I hear Isaiah saying, Here I am, Lord. If you need somebody, Lord, uh, send me. Uh, I know that the harvest is plentiful. And uh, I know that the labors are few. Uh, and, uh, but I'm willing to say to the Lord, uh, Lord, if you need somebody, uh, here I am, Lord, uh, send me. Uh, do I have a praying church in here? Well, my brothers and my sisters, uh, well, I was reading on my way here uh, why the President of the United States earlier has signed a three-week notice uh, to open up the federal government again uh, so that employees will start getting their checks uh, to go to work and get paid. Uh, well, I'm glad that the president made the decision. Now there's not a government shutdown. But I stop by to tell you that he is a spiritual shutdown that's going on. Uh, oh, I wish I had. Uh, a prayer church in here. Do I have anybody here that's praying with me right now uh, that there is uh, a spiritual shutdown that's going on uh, when we refuse uh, to do the work of him that sent us. Uh, we have a spiritual shutdown when nobody's willing to work for the Lord. Uh, that is a spiritual shutdown. When you rather go to work than go to church, uh, that yields a spiritual shutdown. Uh, the harvest is plentiful. 
but the labels are few. I don't know how you feel, but the law's been too good to me for me to shut down on the Lord. The Lord saved my soul. The Lord has healed my body. The Lord has made me whole. Is there anybody here that's made up in their mind? For God I live. For God I die. And somebody, anybody ought to testify how good the Lord has been. You all not to have a shutdown. Why would you shut down? On Daniel's stone that was hewed out of the mountain. Why would you shut down on Jeremiah's mighty battle act? Uh, why would you shut down on Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of the wheel? Uh, why would you shut down on the one that Isaiah said is wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace? Uh, why would you shut down on Solomon's lily of the valley and the road of Sharon? Why would you shut down on David's chief cornerstone that the builders rejected? On Jake was lying out of the tribe of Judah. On John Baptist, Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. On the Samaritan woman's living water. On Mary, Martha, and Lazarus' resurrection. Why would you shut down on a God that's been so good to us? Uh, do I have anybody here that truly knows uh, that the Lord has uh, been mighty good to you? I wish I had some that can declare we serve uh, a good God. Uh, I may not have all that I want, uh, but the Lord has met every one of my needs. Uh, if you know that the Lord has been good to you, y'all not ever shut down on the Lord. Uh, do I have anybody here that's made up in your mind? I'm ready to run on uh, and see what the end is going to be. Uh, I wish I had a few praises. Uh, I haven't been involved like I should have, but start in this day, uh, I'm going to serve God. Uh, I'm going to stay on the battlefield uh, until I die. Uh, is there anybody here that's made up in their mind that I can't help but to serve the Lord? Uh, can I call the road now? Can I call the roll in here? Is there anybody at Central that the Lord been good to? Is there anybody at Central that the Lord has healed your body? Is there anybody at Central that the Lord has made a way for you? Is there anybody at Central that the Lord has opened a door for you? Is there anybody at Central that the Lord has wiped tears away from your eyes? Is there anybody at Central that that the Lord has covered your child. Is there anybody at Central that the Lord is blessed with a job? Is there anybody at Central that you got a few dollars you can rub together all because of the Lord? Is there anybody here that can say after all I've been through? I still, I still, I still, I still have joy, shout joy, shout joy, shout joy. I got joy in the morning. I got joy at noon. I got joy. Shout 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 joy. It's harvest time, but we need your help. It's harvest time, but we need your help. Gang banging all around us, 
we need your help. There have been more murders, more killings, and this zip code where we are, last year than any other zip code. Y'all do know that, right? 29203. Because the harvest, nobody wants to get involved. What if Dr. King never got involved? Nobody wants to get involved. That ain't my business. Well, what is your business? Safety is your business. Care and concern is your business. We can't stay on the sideline. I taught in Bible study this week. I don't know any athlete that wins the game by staying in the weight room. By, doing, by staying in the film room, they learn, but you got to get in the game. You got to get in the game. You got to get on the field. You got to get bumped around just a little bit. They know that the harvest is plentiful. There's much work to be done, but we have few laborers. Think about it. Ask yourself these questions of what am I really doing or what am I involved in to advance God's kingdom here on earth? I know you show up on Sunday, but show up means getting up, getting dressed, driving to church. Beyond the church service, what am I doing? And guess what? It's not always in the church. You may be doing something outside of the wall. All ministry don't take place in the house. True ministry take place out there. Jesus saw this multitude. He had compassion on them because he saw the potential in the multitude. Some of the most gifted and talented people in Columbia, South Carolina are sitting right in this church now. The Bible says your gift will make room for you. We need your help. We need your help. If you get enough ushers who want to usher, guess what? Every usher don't have to usher every Sunday. If you got enough, you can rotate. Huh? Can't you stand at the door? And if it gets a little tight on your leg, can't you lean on the door just a little bit? Can't you give us some? We need more laborers. You may not have the best voice for the choir, but you mix enough bad voice with enough good voice and it'll bling. Huh? We tried opening the gyms on Saturday to get the young people to come out and play ball and do all this other stuff, but we can't get nobody to come and be with them. The harvest is plentiful, but where are the laborers? The reason most of us as males made it, we had somebody that poured in us when we was growing up. We had somebody in the community that would jack us up if we were going the wrong way, we had somebody that pulled us to the side. We had some male role models. What's happening to our role models? That's why our young people are having to turn the TV, turn the athlete, turn the star. They got to see them out there because they don't see them locally. The harvest is plentiful. We got much work to do. Labors are few. Do you know we have young men reading at third grade level now? And why they get in so many fights in schools because kids pick on them and they're embarrassed. And if the teacher asks them to read something out of it and they stumble, they're going to talk about them the rest of the day. So they got to brace up, front up, try to man up, they cover their hurt because they can't put their sentences together. You say, my children read well. I ain't talking about your children. I'm talking about all children. Huh? I'm talking about all children. This harvest is plentiful. Labors are few. Will you do your part? 
Will you help us? We need your help. If we don't, the world will infiltrate the church and the church will become more like the world than the world becoming like the church. Jesus looked around and saw the potential. But then he saw the problem. He said, even though there's a crowd, very few folks out the crowd are really working. Sometimes you can have 500 people, only five or 10 doing the majority of the work. Others are, 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 are spectators. You need some workers. But then he also saw the power. The final thing he said to them, guess what? He said, no matter how much you preach, your preaching ain't going to compel nobody to work. He said that you got to pray to the Lord of the harvest. Let him touch the heart of individuals. Until he touched their heart, the workers would not become laborers in the vineyard. So my prayer right now, bow with me for one second. God, my prayer unto you is that you would touch the heart of some laborers in here that would help us with this harvest. The harvest is too great for one or two individuals to try to tackle. The harvest is too great for pastors, deacons to try to handle. We need more laborers. But God, I'm praying that your spirit would touch their spirit and they would volunteer to do the work that you called them to do. There are some laborers in here that were workers. They've been wounded along the wayside and they are not working anymore like they should. Touch their heart and touch their spirit Remind them that their rewards don't come from folks down here they're working with. But remember, you reward us for our faithfulness. So my prayer is to the Lord of the harvest that you will do the touching. My prayer is that you will do the sinning. And when all of God's children started working together, what a change will be in our lives. What a change would be in our children. What a change would be in our marriages. What a change would be in our community when we all come together. For we are a team, acronym T-E-A-M, together each achieves more when we blend together as a team. For the harvest is truly plentiful, but the labors are few. Our prayer is that you will do this sitting and send us more labors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give God a hand and clap of praise. Come on. Give God a hand and clap of praise. Come on, let's give God a hand and clap of praise. Let's release it now. Let's let it go. Let's put it in God's hand. Let's release it now. Let's release it. 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 Tell them, God, I can't go back for what I didn't do. I can go forward. I can do better. I will do better. My spirit has been touched. My heart has been touched. I will do better. Let us stand together as we extend the invitation to Christian discipleship. There may be someone today up under the sound of my voice. Want to step out from where you are. Give the pastor your hand, but give God your heart. You may come by letter by your Christian experience or candidate for baptism. We serve a whosoever will God, whosoever will, let them come. The door of the church is open as a choir leads us in our invitation to him. The harvest is plentiful. But the labors are few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The harvest is plentiful. Yeah, yeah. But the labors are few. The harvest is plentiful. But the labors are few for the heart. 
go up to church, though, when we come. It is plentiful. Yes, yes, yes. But the labor.